Hello and welcome to Business on the Wire. I'm Mithali Mukherjee. As key states prepare to go to elections across parts of India, the big battle, if you want to call it that, will be in Uttar Pradesh. Not just because of the size, but because of some of the key issues that may arise. The problem for Uttar Pradesh at this point, in terms of at least the nodal points of conversation, is that there are three fulcrums. On the one hand, will religious identity be the push and pull based on which people decide to vote? On the other, will it be a change where people decide to vote along caste lines and that is where they choose their candidates? And on the third is something that has not gotten talked about that much in the last couple of elections, which is the economic crisis and the economic blight. Uh, there has clearly been deceleration since COVID. It has gotten more accentuated, but for a state like Uttar Pradesh, there have been some issues and some warning signals that have been growing for a while now. Before I introduce my guests, I want to walk you through some key data points when we're looking at the state of Uttar Pradesh and the condition really for an average citizen who lives in that state. Number one, youth unemployment in UP stands at 23.2% in 2021, the year that we've just uh, finished up. Now, this is not a COVID only problem. Unemployment Employment in UP was at about 6% in 2018, then it jumped to 20 uh, to 10%, I beg your pardon, in 2019. So it's really been an upward sloping curve uh, in that state. Nationwide inflation, of course, has been high for uh, all of us, whether it's fuel or uh, cooking oil, fruits, vegetables, all of that. Mehengai has certainly become a talking point in Uttar Pradesh, where people are feeling the pinch, especially in terms of what's happening in their households. And the fact that a bottle of mustard oil is now far more expensive for them to procure. Remember, Bihar, Jharkhand and Uttar Pradesh, by the Niti Aayog's own multidimensional poverty index, or the MPI as they call it, are the bottom three states. Again, staying with the Niti Aayog's data so that uh, you know, we are not accused of picking up data from any other source, uh, Uttar Pradesh ranks the worst in child and adolescent mortality. UP is also at the bottom of the 19 large states when you look at the Niti Aayog's health index for 2019 and 20. And uh, what's important amongst this unemployment figure is that one whole half of the population, which is the women, have been completely moved out of the workforce. UP is amongst the states with the lowest female workforce participation. It was less than 10% in urban and rural areas in pre-COVID years. Basically, what that means is that 91% of women in Uttar Pradesh are out of the labor market. The bigger question, though, is whether or not these are issues that are large enough and painful enough for someone to go out and vote on that account. More importantly, what is the economic performance that we've seen by the current Yogi government over the last couple of years? What is the comparison with previous regimes? And where is it that the biggest problems lie? Joining me to talk about all of that are uh, two gentlemen based out of Uttar Pradesh and uh, who really know both that area and how the economics works. Professor Manoj Agarwal, who heads the Department of Economics at the University of Lucknow, and Siddharth Kalhans, who is state correspondent for Business Standard in Lucknow. Professor Agarwal, Siddharth, thank you for joining in and having this conversation with me. Uh, there is a little bit of talk about the economic issues surrounding Uttar Pradesh before it goes into elections. But the primary narrative, of course, remains what may happen across religious lines and what may happen across caste lines. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the economic situation. And I wanted to start with an incident from a few days back, which is the protest that we saw amongst the youth around the railway jobs. Uh, Professor Agarwal, if I could turn to you first, just to get some context on why it happened and what it is reflecting. Yeah, well, I believe that it started in Bihar and there has been some misunderstanding or like that. And the good part is that there is a large number of jobs and for, after a long gap since railway opened its job openings at this low level, yeah. low level uh, posts. So there have been much uh, expectations and everyone wanted to be on board for that. And maybe when they found that uh, there is no much hope. So these type of things always happen, particularly whenever you go for such type of, you know, lower position jobs. And uh, if you look at uh, here in school teaching jobs, and uh, quite often I find that when such large number of recruitments are there, for example, primary school teachers in Uttar Pradesh, that has been thousands and thousands. Ultimately, cumulative, it has been over lakhs. 
so it happens that the politics also gets involved somewhere here so i believe it like that but as far as if you want to come to the unemployment definitely there has been a cumulative unemployment scenario across india not in uttar pradesh or its surrounding states so that has been there so i believe that uh, that is a bit uh, you can say tangential to us in the main stream of economic system of uttar pradesh and nothing to do with you know state level decision making that has been at the central level and the position is for railways for states so that the reason i ask this question is because that event in terms of the railway protest was almost like a catalyst and that's where the conversation started about how acute the unemployment problem is in states like uttar pradesh and the fact that over the past couple of months in smaller measure there have been protests happening amongst the youth protesting against the lack of jobs mitari i uh, i differ from uh, professor ashok agrawal the recent protests they were they were regarding that uh, railway recruitment board examination railway had advertised about this uh, examination in 2019 now 3 years after there was no communication and the students were given dates after dates after dates as examples it happened this date this date this date and that date so i mean you see they were getting impatient for the last three and a half years there was, there was there was no examination what to talk of the selection and then interview and then uh, 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 getting posted similarly in uttar pradesh there has been no group c or group d examination for the last five and a half years last it was in 2016 in october so the students particularly like this started in allahabad why allahabad allahabad university has got a capacity of say around 50000 students and there are around 5 lakh students who come to allahabad from smaller towns who cannot go who cannot afford going to delhi or uh, other big places So from the small villages district backward places they come to allahabad for preparation of various competition examinations so allahabad there is a uh, it is known as a hub of uh, uh, student preparing for competition and they are uh, getting impatient for the last so many years there has been no there has been no recruitment there has been no examination they have been filling forms and getting no response so that makes them quite uncomfortable that, that uh, uncomfortable that creates a problem before yeah. this incident before this incident i tell you one day say around 14 15 uh, days back it was i think uh, uh, 4th or 5th of january on a single call circulated over whatsapp thousands of the students who were living in delegacies and small rooms they came outside in the night and protested no political party behind no student organization behind them but the unrest is so high that they came out in uttar pradesh around 1.2 lakh job have been officially killed Have been officially killed. There has been no recruitment on over 4.5 lakh vacant posts. I'm talking about government jobs, mm. private jobs. You can see the situation. It is all over country, yeah. not in alone, not alone in UP. So yeah. that 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 makes child that makes students that makes the youth uh, uncomfortable, and they have been resisting, protesting. in lucknow there has been no protest uh, from any political party for the last leave aside this uh, last one year when elections were approaching but the students unemployed youths they have been continuously protesting for the last four and a half years professor m k agrawal must be reading in newspapers some day it is a teacher some day it is a shiksha mitra and then uh, uh, instructors then translators and then tenity of people tenity of people they have been every day protesting in the state capital of lucknow
Mm, I hear you. So let's talk a little bit about that data. Professor Agarwal, if I may come to you, uh, the CMI figures which are working for all states and nationwide indicate that youth unemployment level has grown five times you know, from where it is. Now we're looking at the 20s in terms of just the youth unemployment. But we also have a situation where there are advertisements, front page advertisements published by the Yogi government saying uh, unemployment has fallen four times. Uh, four lakh government jobs have been created since 2017. Uh, is, I mean, is this false information that is being uh, peddled by the UP government? Uh, I believe that uh, instead of saying false to anyone, let us say, you know, discuss in a rational manner. For example, if you are quoting simply the government job and no government can, no government, I am telling you, if you are looking at the sixth finance, uh, sixth pay commission report, what was there, what uh, Mr. Siddharth is referring to, group D recruitment has been banned in the sixth, finance, sixth pay commission across India, including government of India. Similarly, and that is to be had through outsourcing. Group D means whether it is the sweeper, whether it is the class four staff, they have to be hired through outsourcing agencies. Mm -hmm. So first thing, let us make it clear. And secondly, if you are coming to the government job, any government, since it is election time, so many things are, you know, flared up in a different tone. So sometimes, you know, real economic issues are killed and only such, uh, you know, fancy items are taken up. So that's why I say, ki if we are discussing only government jobs, yes, there have been a fancy item, Professor Agarwal. Uh, in the sense that you are discussing, this is only fancy item in the sense that you initiated your talk with the unrest of, you know, that type of students instead of discussing, you know, real economic issues that has been transforming in Uttar Pradesh. And That's not a real economic issue? Uh, no, it's a real economic issue, but I believe that it should not have been the opening point. And secondly, when you say that 4.5 uh, lakh government jobs, so definitely there have been the quality of jobs that has been created without, you know. I'm asking you that there is a front page advertisement saying 4 lakh See, I'm, I'm not interested. That, 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 see, listen, listen, Vitali. Vitali, listen. Whether yeah. it is front page, whether it is inner page, that is for political parties to respond. As a student of economics, my only submission, we can discuss only the core economic issues. And I'm not here to discuss the political issue. That's it. Okay, let's discuss core economic issues yeah. like UP yeah. GDP growth, where yeah. GSDP for UP has grown at a compounded rate of 1.95% over 2017 to 2021. This yeah. is contrast to the growth of 6.92% over 2012 to 2017. How do you com compare uh, GSDP? First, I will say that this is misplaced comparison. When you are taking into account, you know, this uh, Corona period, definitely this is a misplaced type of comparison. And you may not have, because these are the two abnormal years. So it is not rational to discuss. Definitely, I still believe that earlier period has a higher growth. But when you are including this year, particularly mm. 2021, this is abnormal year, not in India, not in our state. Across the world, you know, global GDP has come down. So yeah. the, we are not discussing global, global, sir. We are discussing UP. So let no, me... No, even, even in UP, if you are including 2021, I believe that uh, somewhere it is irrational to include this type of, you know, and then comparing it uh, with the, uh, you know, normal type of years, any student of economics won't subscribe to this type of comparison. Okay, Siddharth, what is the best way to compare economic growth, especially when we have an environment where the state government actually claims that economic growth has gotten better, but we have a situation where per capita income for Uttar Pradesh has grown by merely 0.4% over four years. And mind you, not all four years had COVID. Uh... <clears throat> Professor Agarwal was saying that uh, let's, it's very irrational to compare it, especially when uh, there was a pandemic time. So I believe uh, you should uh, uh, put ahead 2019-2018 uh, figures when there was no COVID. COVID exactly it started in UP in 2020 or in the latter part of 2020. I have, I'm, I'm just back from a press conference uh, of the Chief Minister of UP, where he has been saying 
that during his uh, uh, five year regime, there had been um, an investment of three lakhs crore. He got a proposal. He got proposals of four point seven five uh, lakh crores and three lakh crore investment. It has uh, come to UP. It has. It, it is already there in UP, and uh, projects have started, and they are delivering. So, if such a huge investment, it has been poured into uh, this state. Obviously, there would have been so many. Uh, industrial units, so many production units would have been started, there would have been job, then why the GSTP situation is like this? Why there is so much curtailment of jobs? And fine, Professor N.K. Agrawal, uh, technically Group D services, they have been disbanded, but every department has been recruiting uh, Group D cadre. Just before elections were announced, the local bodies of 56 districts, they had advertised for the sweeper's job. And there was news in so many newspapers that postgraduate, engineering graduates, they have been applying for it. So just please accept that lakhs of jobs in UP, government jobs have been curtailed, lakhs of jobs. And government has been claiming. You you were talking about that uh, the employment, uh, the unemployment ratio. It has come down. The fact is that that people have stopped asking for job. People have stopped applying for job. During pandemic period, a large number of people they came, they settled in villages, they didn't go back, and they have stopped. So this is the situation, and this situation is more dangerous then applying and waiting for the job. Actually, there's uh, even more data on that, Siddharth. You know, for Uttar Pradesh, though the unemployment uh, figure for those with secondary education has tripled. For higher secondary, it has quadrupled, so four times. For graduates, it has gone from 21% to 51%. And for those with technical diplomas, from 13% to 66%. So it's fairly clear that uh, people who are... Uh, getting further qualifications are actually finding it even more difficult to get a job. But uh, Professor Agarwal uh, finds this a fancy subject. So let me go back to his own issue of uh, economics. No, first let me tell you, you know, uh, let me tell you, you know, what uh, Siddharth says that 3 lakh crore rupees, if it is invested, why it is not translating into job creation and GDP growth. Always there is gestation period to investments, wherever it is. And it is not that it is only textbook. And Siddharth also knows it. For example, anybody if he is installing any unit, can you claim that it is for terminus immediately that it is a, if one is you know investing anywhere, even for a shop that is you know reaping benefits immediately, it takes time. And unfortunately, see, I have been watching this state not from today, not from this government, not from the earlier government, not from the earlier. I've been watching this state economy for the last 30 years. So that's why I can say, and if you are putting the economy in a particular period of two years or three years, it would be injustice to any type of development. For example, and you probably missed my point when I said, when a class regime, now if you want to know with the, you know, government's regime, that generally we don't do. But if you want to do, there has been a better growth rate and it has been because of the earlier government's better performance. And if you are going much earlier, then it would have been you know, much stalemate, rather slow down and rather it is very slow growth rate for around 15 to 20 years. Thereafter, it started bouncing up with the Mayawati government and that capitalized. But unfortunately, whatever strategy it has been in UP economy, it has been ad hocism prevailing throughout. And why it could grow, that is also to see that what were the factors to be grown. MSMEs were killed throughout, whenever even economic growth was there, and MSME has been backbone of UP economy, okay. right? And when you are discussing the core issue, let me tell you what are other core issues. Look at the farm sector. The farm sector plight is not from today or from five years or from 10 years. It is the cumulative effect of farm sector for last, I can say, uh, 
I'm not going that much back. If you are going to the genesis, the genesis lies in 1956. I'm not going that back. That is that would be academic discussion. I know, but the thing is, if you are looking how to come out, if UPs per capita income decline to less than half of the average of the uh, you know uh, nation's average, when UPs per capita income was higher in early 50s than the national average. definitely it is the cumulative backwardness of uttar pradesh that we have to understand and then we have to discuss what can be the way out no single government i challenge anyone no single government it is the cumulative effects of the economy benefits that can be derived and no single government if it has been done i don't know who is coming next who is not coming next and unfortunately another that has been you know setback for up has been inconsistent policy regime unlike you know the states of maharashtra even the government changes there is no changes policy regime oh but God, the, the best, yeah. so if you are saying that the growth is cumulative from you know yeah. what government builds versus the other please True. explain to me please explain to me why manufacturing has shown a negative growth of 3.34% compared to almost 15% in the previous regime i am not getting into political uh, you know very true very true very true very true i'm just asking you why manufacturing is actually degrowing and has reached a negative tick of 3% when you had an almost 15 and can you tell me the period can you tell me the period when you say the negative i'm talking about this particular government versus the previous government no no in within particular government what is the period that you are discussing whether the pandemic period the, uh, the current bjp government has come to power sir including the pandemic year no that are you are you discussing that in two years manufacturing has taken a nose dive from 50% <coughs> to minus 3% and if government. if you are looking if you are looking can any government of any ones ask the manufacturing to go to the negative unless there has been some structural that's why i'm saying in uttar pradesh if you are looking at the manufacturing sector what has been the reason was there earlier electricity to the extent that is available now was there infrastructure because the what has been lagging earlier that's why i say the cumulative loss to uttar pradesh was more because of two reasons one was that is in terms of the relative infrastructure index we were far behind other states that developed including madhya pradesh in the neighboring states they developed because they developed their infrastructure first and we were lacking here like anything so what is required if you are looking in terms of sub facilitating environment can't you accept that this has been best done this regime if you are comparing with regime and compelling me to go through the regime only Okay, let me turn it to Siddharth. I don't live in Lucknow. Uh, I don't have any, you know, personal bias over here. I'm simply asking you for a data comparison, Siddharth, on the basis of, as Professor Agarwal says, and even is up doing business also. You can, you may include is up doing business also. And who's who who's who's index of is up doing business? Is up doing business now. Uttar Pradesh stands second in the country among the states. Who, sir, who, whose index is this? This is Niti Aayog, the government. Okay, I'm glad you said that because according to Niti Aayog's own multi-dimensional poverty index, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and Jharkhand are amongst the poorest states for the electorate. So true, uh, acceptable, acceptable, acceptable. That's acceptable. Other issues that you have raised, Siddharth, uh, please uh, you know fill us all in. What has happened with electricity? What has happened with uh, other things in 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 your state? electricity we haven't added a single unit to our capacity installed capacity in the last 5 years we are only purchasing cap uh, electricity from the energy exchange at a very high rate and uh, the discounts uh, in uttar pradesh they are running into huge losses it has been adding year by year so you can say we are using the udhar ki electricity this electricity is being borrowed we are we are buying it at a very high rate we are not adding anything to our generation capacity and this is very unfortunate then come to the ease of doing business fine ease of doing business as you know there are certain parameters you have to fulfill it and your ranks will go up 
fine, we have fulfilled that. But what is the result? What is the outcome of that? Professor Agrawal was saying that there is a gestation period. I agree. If a unit is being set up and it starts production, it starts contributing to the GSDP after a certain period of time. I agree. But what about the job? Without employing anybody, they have started production. So if they have started production, if the unit has been set up and a unit is running, then obviously there would have been some people who, who, who are working there. Where are those people? It should reflect, it should reflect in the overall figure of the employment. Mm -hmm. Then there is one more thing. This government has been advertising. We have provided so many jobs in the MSME sector. MSME sectors were offered certain stops and rebates. Mm -hmm. You employ. There are 80 lakh plus MSMEs, working MSMEs. Mm -hmm. And it was a noble idea. You employ at least one person. And uh, the in unemployment that uh, mm -hmm. uh, happened in the pandemic period, mm -hmm. it will be wiped out. Mm -hmm. So what MSMEs, what MSMEs have done? They retrenched 10 people during the pandemic, then hired two people, then hired two people, and our government has been showing that data. Say, look, these, these are the people who have been hired. <coughs> And it is reflecting on the roads and the streets of UP. The large scale unemployment has been reflecting on the streets of UP. Since we are talking about the we are talking about the budget and what UP has got, fine. Everyone is talking about infrastructure, and there will be so much of investment on infrastructure. One expressway. It was constructed and completed during the previous regime, the, the, the current regime. This was Purvanchal Expressway. I think it was more than 30,000 crores of investment. I had visited several times to that place. It employed, for a certain period of time, it employed 2,900 people only. So had this money been poured into, had this money been given to the Manrega, several, several lakhs of job would have been created, would have been created more. That I want to ask. So you. thrust was, so there was a need of, there was a need of uh, increasing the allocation to the Manrega. Yeah. Instead of provide you, I, everyone, even Professor Agrawal knows this heavy uh, in, uh, investment in the infra sector, which are the companies who are going to be benefited most. You know the name, I know the name, Professor Agrawal also knows the name. And how many, how, how, how many people will get employment? But 5%, 5 of that money, if it is being put in um, uh, this MNREDA, mm -hmm. there would have been several lakhs of employment and mm -hmm. that too in the rural sector, which is suffering the most. I want to talk a little bit about this point on MSMEs because there is also an observation that uh, over the last couple of years, perhaps there has been more harm done to some industries that were doing quite well in Uttar Pradesh, for example, the large leather industry. The shutting down of the abattoirs has actually hit both uh, the you know the, the fate of that particular MSME space as also employment opportunities. What happened uh, since that rule came in about shutting unlicensed abattoirs? You know what was the trickle down effect for the entire sector? See the leather industry. You can say uh, it is operating at uh, around twenty five percent of what it used to be at one point of time. You can any any day visit Agra, ask the people, are you getting processed leather from Kanpur or getting it from somewhere else? They will say, we are getting it from Chennai. Some have been saying that they are expo they are they are uh, taking it from Bangladesh. There are so many uh, leather tanneries in Kanpur. They have gone to Bengal, some have gone to Chennai. 
in the name of sewage treatment, in the name of cleaning Ganga, in the name of so many things. First, they were told to operate 50% of their installed capacity. Then there was, there used to be a uh, shift wise uh, running of the industry. 15 days you will operate, 15 days he will operate. And finally, many of them, they closed their units. Mm. And then our leather industry, the shoe makers and the saddlery makers and uh, apparel makers, they are getting leather from outside, which is costly. Their cost is going up. So in the market, they are not competing. They are finding it difficult to compete. And the impact is on the entire leather industry. Then we, you, you talk about self, talk about chicken. We are sitting in Lucknow. Ask any any chicken manufacturer what happened after this GST, uh, GST was increased. Yeah. So this is a pathetic situation. The hojri industry, Kanpur was once known for it. Now, most of them, they have their units in Tirpur. They have gone. They have gone to Tirpur. Now, for the notional um, uh, kind of thing, they, they are having their one or two units in Kanpur. Professor Agarwal, let me turn to you. What is your opinion of what has happened in the MSME space? Uh, and I'm asking specifically about these industries, the leather industry. What was it contributing to the state economy? the hosiery industry, as uh, you know, Siddharth just mentioned, and what you think uh, is the problem there? See, for leather industry, there is some structural problem. One that has been discussed by Siddharth. The other, why they are not getting leather from here? It requires to, you know, digress from the main track. Then you will find why they are not getting the leather from here. I'm not opening the episodes because that will digress us from the main core. That, that, is, uh, that Siddharth will explain that why earlier they were getting and now why they are not getting it. So that requires a different type of issue. And as far as electricity that it was not installed, agreed Siddharth that not a single, you know, uh, megawatt was installed. But if you are looking at the rooftops in your city, around the city, on the roads, you will find the solar has been expanded and promoted in Uttar Pradesh as a green energy and its share at national level in Uttar Pradesh. And during the investor summit, what happened? Solar has been the best thing that happened in Uttar Pradesh and this defense corridor. And one thing that you mentioned, probably you could not get my point when I said that uh, uh, this type of thing, a uh, gestation period, when I mean to say gestation period, it means still the units have to come at the production level. Unless they are coming to the production level, they cannot imply to the extent that is required. That is, they are since they are still to operate, how can they have that type of employment? This one. Can you share some data, sir? How many units have been set up and in what year? See, it is very difficult for us in the university to get this type of micro level data. But then how would you know their gestation period? It's very simple. That ask you, we are discussing. Even I discuss with Siddharth also. It is not that we don't discuss. And we discuss by, you know, many other such type of things. All the time you may not have, you know, exact data in your pocket. But many times you derive inferences based upon the experience and discussions also. And as far MSME is concerned, this MSME has been killed. This is what I am saying, that this is MSME, particularly if you are looking since 91, that has been, you know, the worst for Uttar Pradesh. That's why I mentioned that's MSME. Now this is being revived. And definitely when Siddharth says, I even agree to this point, that earlier they were retrenched, not retrenched when the unit was closed. How can one pay the salary? And MSMEs, MSMEs are not monolith. You try to understand. If one is the leather unit in crores, the, there are the MSME in lakhs also. So that is the range of MSME. So we said, understand that when the pandemic is still not over, if you are looking for two months and the hospitality sector and tourism sector, that employs a lot that is still to come up. And if you are looking around this type of thing, if you are going into the sectoral behavior, then you will find what are the causes of current uh, problems, that is the, this uh, pandemic, and what has been the structural consequences 
for 91 91 has been the worst for uttar pradesh why we were not prepared and it started interstate competition earlier we were in a very closed cozy atmosphere so there was some growth it's okay it is had with the best so that's why it again requires a structural transformation that could not be done earlier again i would emphasize that this process got initiated with mayawati government to improve the structural phenomena but could not be done at the pace that is being done now and everyone contributed but its cumulative benefits is required to be translated unless we are having the big push strategy and they started in a gradualism and what what requires the place being in such a backward state to be having big push effort so was it demonetization that was the problem for msmes then is that what uh, caused a problem sir uh when i say it started in 91 so i mean putting all the blame on uh, demonetization i think it is unfair it again it is a type, type of structural transformation of the economy had there not been demonetization then should we continue in the gray economy for long period and the gray economy expanding like anything okay i'm only asking because there was 15% manufacturing growth before that and then it's come to negative 3 so you know some it's obviously not from 91 that uh, the trouble uh, arose but since you raised the point of niti ayog and its indices uh, you know let me share some data from there uh which is not to do with the hard infrastructure you talked about you, you know what's happening with the highways etc or siddhar did according to niti ayog uttar pradesh ranks the worst in child and adolescent mortality it is also the bottom of 19 large states when it comes to uh, niti ayog's health index how would you rate the performance of the government with regards to health especially given what was seen and documented through the second wave of covid and when you are discussing this health issue uh again it has been due to this uh, it did not increase in any state first let me tell you it never increased in any state every state has been improving now the question is what is the speed of improvement increasing means improvement rate not in terms of the mortality i mean how mortality is coming down so when you finding i uh, the other thing that i will provide uh, i mean definitely you would have also seen this beti bachao beti padhao abhiyan and when you are looking you know this type of mortality overall mortality and this uh, mortality indicator you will find that uttar pradesh has been improving like anything in the last 20 years cumulative again this is such an parameter that it has been improving like anything in uttar pradesh unfortunately what the media outside projects uttar pradesh that it has been always a laggard state but if you are looking into the demographic features i would again emphasize that it is the cumulative effect that has been improving upon and if there has been this type of you know interstate comparison if you are looking at it uttar rate of improvement in uttar pradesh has been the best this is what i can say in terms of beti bachao beti padhao abhiyan i would say that the sex ratio is improving in many of the districts of uttar pradesh well that is a national phenomena everywhere it is improving even the worst state like haryana it has been improving so let's not pat the back of up government for that only uh, but uh, regarding health yes i agree the health uh, condition in up and its uh, bad shape you cannot blame a single government of yogi adityanath or akhilesh yadav or mayawati but it has always been like that see what has been claimed and what is the ground situation obviously we are talking about uh, elections are on so we would be talking about the present government the last 5 years performance of the government in the last 5 years the government again you sitting in delhi must have been seeing lot many advertisements of uh, so many medical colleges so many high grade hospitals and all that fine medical colleges have been uh, constructed but it has been constructed a medical college needs technician a medical college needs faculty a medical college needs so many things 
that is still lagging. There are uh, reports of uh, buildings of medical colleges. They have been inaugurated, but uh, I don't think they would be completed in coming one or two years even. But on paper, it has been claimed that it has already. The second wave of pandemic, it has really and really unearthed uh, all the claims that has been made by the government, that has been made by the individual, that has been made by the economists and so many people. Because we had nothing at district level, nothing. What to talk about the rural uh, primary health centers? Rural primary health centers, they couldn't provide even uh, basic drugs like paracetamol and uh, Vicosur. In medical colleges, in uh, district hospitals, we had no infrastructure to support such a large uh, level of uh, patients inflow. Mm. So, lot, lot more is needed. Lot more has to be done for this uh, health sector. And across the country, there are there are states which have done better, which are far better than us. And UP needs special focus, special attention on this uh, health sector. That is really missing. Education, uh, Professor Agarwal, he knows better and he can tell you better. Siddharth, there's another issue which, uh, you know, is coming up quite frequently, especially when our reporters hit the ground and speak to people in villages, which is Mahengai. This is, again, admittedly not a problem just for this state. It is across the country. Inflation has been rising. The cost of cooking oil, the cost of fruits and vegetables. For a long time, the cost of petrol and diesel was rising. Uh, how big an issue, how big a muddha do you think Mahengai is going to be? And uh, we understand that there is already, you know, some kind of ration scheme that has been started off. How successful has that been in terms of providing, uh, you know, rice and dal and cooking oil to households? In the last 30 years, I have never seen inflation becoming an issue, but this time it is becoming. In villages, be it uh, villages, be it city, anywhere. If you talk to anybody, he will definitely say, Inflation is one of the biggest cause of worry. So, I mean, I have been talking to political leaders also. They are really surprised. They never thought that inflation will become an issue. And that is why, since the runoff for the elections are going on, you are, for the first time, our political leaders, they have been talking about Mahangai. They have been talking about uh, uh, high rates of edible oil, diesel and petrol and everything. Mm -hmm. Because it is pinching at such a great level that nobody can avoid it now. Nobody can avoid it. Be it a village, be it a uh, urban area, middle class, higher middle class, poor, everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. Professor Agarwal, would you like to come in on that? How big uh, an issue or concern or plight do you think people are facing in terms of inflation and uh, to your mind do you think the government is the state government is doing everything it can to address that well as far as uh, inflation the two dimensions that discussed uh, siddharth discussed that is about the you know edible oil number one number two <clears throat> that has been being uh, discussed about the petroleum product so definitely petroleum product prices have been shooting up now it has been contained to a large extent. Yes, for once the elections are over, it will start rising again. Mm -hmm. Not too early. <laughs> and there know, is the, already there is a mention. There is a mention of two rupee, two rupee in the in the budget, <laughs> not in the speech, but in the budget document. The document, yeah. On non blended, on non blended petrol. Right. See, uh, incidentally, you know, most of our discussions remains. And that is my you know, worst worry for our election, that we confine our discussion and our strategy to a particular election. And that is my you know, question. That's why I am this time, this time, since I have been watching since you know, 1989, so this time I had made it a plan to author a book that will discuss on you know, 
between the two elections what is happening because this is the best strategy to understand the economy and unfortunately unfortunately whatever is discussed in the election campaign nobody takes any lesson even we don't take a lesson as you know as a professor of economics as a senior journalist siddhar will forget you will also forget what happened in uttar pradesh discussion and that has been the plight uh, you know plight of a state like uttar pradesh ki we are ad hoc is not in terms of the governance we in terms of you know the we are cl- claiming ourselves to you know watch dog on that but still we forget so that is the plight this is what i want to say there must be continuity in discussion debates and discourse that will help uttar pradesh and with ali across the things one request to you at least because you are not from uttar pradesh i have been asking when uh, akhilesh came when mayawati came that outside uttar pradesh people think that uttar pradesh is in mess it has never been in a mess it has never been in a mess and uttar pradesh has been look at any indicator comparative indicator look at demographic indicator for 50 years look in terms of land order for 50 years i tell you now i'm going beyond a particular state a government this government that government what i say uttar pradesh is doing much better much better the only thing is outside uttar pradesh people take it for granted that is my worst complaint sir par ye to mera sawal tha hi nahi main aapko nahi main main isliye aapka sawal nahi tha lekin aapki baat se ek cheez ye laga aapki baat se laga ki uttar pradesh ke sath sab kuch galat hai not at all i said inflation is a national issue everyone is suffering no no not inflation not inflation not inflation not inflation, not inflation. i am talking in totality that's why i responded to in totality as far as inflation is concerned siddharth said that it is not confined to uttar pradesh only it is a national phenomena whether it is the oil price whether it is a petroleum price so as far as state government is concerned asking anything for such things i think ab uh, state government kya kar lega पांच रुपए अगर वो अपना कम करता है वैट तो उधर उसको पैंडमिक में तो कहीं ना कहीं उसको चाहिए पैसा कहां से लाएंगे पेट्रोलियम प्राइसेस आर मच लोअर देन नेबरिंग राजस्थान मध्य प्रदेश एंड डेली that's great so i'm talking about food inflation and i'm uh, giving you the example of tamil nadu as a state where rations are being given out so i am asking you is the state government doing the same thing are they doing enough to address food inflation particularly cooking oil issues like that are they are they giving out dal chawal uh, you know cooking oil which is what we have heard is being done siddharth so will uh, answer this thing properly because what is happening on the ground because we go by data most of the time Okay. and siddharth would tell and people are getting it my feedback is people are getting it and that's why there is no large scale complaint otherwise people are not hesitant to complain against it that's okay. my submission okay um you know siddharth i have a larger question since uh, professor agarwal broadened this conversation the sort of the issue as well for uttar pradesh is that over the years multiple parties have arisen with <coughs> parties articulating the interest of very specific subcasts whether it is within the obcs or within the scheduled castes uh, and what what may have happened because of that is the interests of marginalized communities has gotten more and more fragmented toot gaya hai do you do you fear that economic distress will not get the importance that it deserves because of this fragmented nature that the state is is living through uh you are right uh, uh because of uh, you are talking that so many political parties have risen up in the uh, last so many years frankly speaking these parties they are regional parties yeah. formed in the name of social justice yeah catering to a particular segment of uh, the society but see uh, i am optimistic because uh, unfortunately the pandemic has uh, created such a situation where economic stress of the marginalized sector that has to be addressed and uh, the economic it is it is so uniform 
uh, be it Dalit, be it minority, be it uh, backwards, be it the upper caste, everywhere, everywhere they have to address it and they have to uh, do something. You were talking about this uh, uh, food inflation, edible oil, fine, uh, a pack, fancy pack, fancy is the buzzword in this discussion, fancy pack of, uh, say, I don't know, 5, 10 kg, it is being distributed. Mm -hmm. The period has been extended uh, till March and elections will also end in the March. उसके आगे क्या होना है मुझे नहीं मालूम है तो अभी ऐसा है but uh, it cannot fulfill the huge requirement of edible oil that is being consumed in the state and yes it uh, price it is pinching people are worried diesel petrol usually it becomes the core issue and people start talking about the hike in diesel petrol or which will, they start doing political drama also. Edible oil for the first time I have been seeing, it's a poll issue. And uh, I was expecting because uh, myself being a farmer also, I was expecting that uh, with the increase in the crop area of uh, mustard and other things, this will be eased out. But uh, thanks to weather, it is not going to be eased out in coming days also. So yes, edible oil, food. overall food inflation, it is an issue. And what state governments can do? Reducing VAT, asking for GST reduction or leave aside these things. UP government has been making records in the government procurement of paddy wheat you must have seen holdings in delhi also the record procurement see on the ground level 95 percent of the procurement is being done by the middlemen the bicholia 99 percent of genuine farmers they never go to the government procurement uh, center, they are still forced to sell their produce at half of the MSP in the open market and resulting in lack of cash in their pocket. And with high food inflation, with high inflation everywhere, they are facing a lot of problems. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Professor Agarwal is to the 1950s, but this goes back to pre-independence Siddharth, which is the difference in system in terms of, you know, the, the North and the South, where the South moved with the Talukdars, but this unfortunately became a situation for Northern India. We are completely out of time, but thank you so much, both of you, for joining in, for being such good sports. Uh, Professor Agarwal, I will definitely visit your city, and I'm sure we'll have a longer chat about why unemployment... Yeah. Fancy. You're welcome. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. But Bye. one request again. Yes. At least keep Uttar Pradesh in high spirit in your mind. <laughs> it is a sunrise state in India and without Uttar Pradesh, India cannot grow. That's great, sir. It'll be good to see some action behind the statements as well. But thank you both for joining in. Today. Get a sneak peek of exclusive content before everyone else for channel members only. Memberships start at Rs. 89. Hit the join button below.